I have with me Aliza Bevilacqua, Sustainability Reporting Senior Technical Manager from AFRAG. Welcome, Aliza. So my first question to you, since you come from AFRAG, it's about the CSRD and reporting. Sustainability reporting, in fact, has become increasingly important for stakeholders to understand the company's ESG performance. The CSRD is intended to establish more comprehensive and standardized sustainability reporting requirements adopting the European sustainability reporting standards. Why do we emphasize the significance of establishing these standards? Uh, thank you, thank you, Gabriela. For me, the significance of the standards rely on the fact that they bring really a new innovation. They have a kind of a game-changing role in the corporate reporting space and in sustainability at large. Uh, why? The um, sustainability reporting uh, uh, provides now a, give a, a complete pictures of the company by introducing the sustainability information uh, at the same time, at the same place uh, uh, of, the, of the financial uh, reporting and information, meaning that companies are working on the two legs, the financial and the sustainability legs. Um, they uh, are as well a management tool in the sense that they provide awareness and they uh, there is and there will be a learning effect uh, in uh, adopting uh, and in reporting uh, through the standards uh, to increasingly become aware of the ESG performance, uh, ESG risk and new risk and how uh, they, they compare internally but also within industries for example. Um, so um, a, a starting point I would say to um, address and to embed the ESG in the corporate uh, strategies um, and uh, to uh, prompt as well innovation uh, of products, uh, of uh, uh, tools within companies. Now, um, it's also, uh, and I mentioned a growing to, to face and to answer a growing request for ESG uh, information by uh, investors, by clients, by supply chains in, com in, in, uh, in companies. So um, there is a full ecosystem that those standards are creating. Um, and uh, of course now we have the large companies starting to report. Um, we will have uh, um, in few years the, the standards for the listed SME, which are also under the scope of the CSRD. But uh, we are also thinking of an inclusive system, modular system of a building block approach for the ESRS, where also the smaller companies or the companies that are not uh, obliged to report uh, under the CSRD can voluntarily be part of the journey and uh, can uh, use. Um, so we are thinking of a voluntary standards and we are developing it right now. Uh, in this, through this building uh, block system and approach uh, for SMEs uh, to include uh, them as well in the sustainability reporting as part of sustainability journey. One of the game changers, I would say, in these standards is the fact that we're looking from a double materiality perspective and uh, this forms the foundation for identifying the themes and topics material to the particular organization, irrespective of the size. Taking into account two critical perspectives, the potential impact on the organization and the significance and impact to stakeholders. Why does this assessment carry such significant importance? Yes, the um, double materiality is really a key concept of the standard. It is the starting point of the reporting process. And uh, uh, it's very important to emphasize this. Um, you mentioned already the double materiality uh, where we have, uh, and the company has to um, look at the impact uh, and the risk and opportunities that uh, um, it, it has on the planet and people, and then on the other way around, the financial materiality, which is uh, how the sustainability matters uh, um, impact uh, or 
trigger financial effects and therefore uh, financial change the financial positions of companies, uh, which is uh, at, at the same time uh, also very important. So this double concept is going to uh, lead to gain uh, a learning effect uh, and uh, it's going to be uh, the very starting point to identify what are the material sustainability matters and then adapt the reporting and channel orient the reporting of the companies. So first of all, I would say it's uh, becoming aware of a starting point of, of the company. Um, materiality is uh, uh, not easy, uh, we know, and we are also releasing shortly uh, some guidance on materiality at EFREC um, to help companies implement. Um, so we, we think this is a crucial, uh, innovative concept, which goes, by the way, together with the value chain concept, because uh, the materiality has to be uh, looking and look through the uh, upstream and downstream value chain, uh, which uh, uh, also means that uh, there is a logic of indirect impacts or indirect uh, um, uh, financial uh, risks and opportunities, which uh, is embedded as well in this double materiality concept. So indirect impact for many industries are the majority mm -hmm. of the impact. So there is a new perspective, uh, uh, new innovation in the approach to reporting, which uh, also creates uh, new tools uh, uh, on the management strategic side of companies to fulfill uh, those uh, uh, those, uh, those needs, uh, regular voluntary needs, but uh, regulation and compliance, I would say it's uh, not the scope per se, certainly uh, it's not the aim. Uh, the aim is the transformation of potential of the standards. It is a tool, in fact. I mean, the materiality assessment, if done correctly, and if we look from both perspectives, it will help us to identify, not necessarily starting implementing immediately because sometimes we would need more time, but at least you'll have a strategy and you'll build that strategy over the short, medium and longer term. And like that, you can also be transparent to whoever is looking into your accounts on what is your plan and that you're aware that, yes, there's that impact, but we need to cater for that in a year's time because of certain technologies that are not yet in place, for example. But it is definitely a tool and I think it is very important, yes, that companies focus on this assessment as it will build the foundation for anything else, strategy, risk assessment, and finally reporting. So thank you, Aliza, very insightful. And Pleasure. thank you for accepting our invitation. Pleasure, thank you.